Join Sarah Weiss in the infinite field of energetic aliveness and heart-centered wisdom. This is the Earth Love Spirit Podcast. Welcome to the Earth Love Spirit Podcast. I'm Sarah Weiss, your host, and I'd like to start off with a little reminder I'll be starting a new Enlightened Empath training beginning March 20th. And this is a beautiful training to help empaths understand that they really are perceivers and not receivers, that they have a role to play in illuminating the new paradigm. They have the senses to be able to see, know, feel, um, hear the expanded bandwidth of the new paradigm. And so it also helps empaths understand that they're not defined by being an empath, but it is one of their gifts and it's time to activate it now. So check out the program at www.spiritheelonline.com under Enlightened Empath. Thanks for taking in that reminder. So today we have a very fresh, very vibrant uh, guest on the Earth Love Spirit podcast. We have Gabriella Masala. Now, Gabriella is really into this fresh, new, minute by minute creative energy that is part of this new paradigm. As she has been steeped in the universal wisdom teachings, expressive arts, and energy medicine for over 20 years. She's written a beautiful book called Everyday Magnificent, Practices to Activate an Unlimited Life, which is more of a journaling process to take you back into an intimate relationship with yourself. She's a lover of the creative process as a catalyst for evolution, and she's passionate about pioneering what it means to be fully alive and serving as soul midwife for the birth of new paradigms. So let's welcome Gabriella. Welcome, Gabriella. Good morning, Sarah. I want our listeners to join with us in this beautiful sphere of light that we have joined together in. So just to start off the podcast, I'd love to invite you to draw us together in spirit and light with a beautiful invocation. Thank you, Sarah, and it's an honor to be here with you and all of the listeners. So let's presence by taking a few relaxed, long, deep inhales and exhales. As we do, allowing our root to drop into the earth, our crown to lengthen towards the sky, rib cage and chest, front and back of the body to fill with air with breath, coming present to this sacred vessel of our bodies and calling our spirits fully present, our hearts softening and opening as we call in and receive the blessings of every direction, including the east, the south, the west, the north, below, above, and within, as we take a seat in the throne of our hearts and open to receive the most life-giving connection and conversation possible today. And one more long inhaling gratitude, exhaling smile as we also send out pure love, pure gratitude, infinite blessings in every direction, right back to all beings and feel ourselves relaxed here at home together for a conversation of revelation and divine love. Ashe. Beautiful. Thank you for that blessing and It's taken us into a deep silence within us. And those listeners to this podcast um, really appreciate the energy, the light, the frequency that we share with them through our conversation. 
So it feels like we're in a deep silence right now, and I hope the listeners allow themselves to go into a deep silence, to relax, because we're going to have a beautiful conversation today, Gabriella and myself. We're very attuned to the new energies, to what's really supporting us and moving us forward here in the new paradigm. And you know, if I were to characterize Gabriella's work, it's about the infinite, about grounding the infinite within you, about becoming friends with the unknown, and also finding the support in the beautiful world that sur surrounds us to become your unique, fantastic, creative being. So let's just start a little bit, Gabriella, with your background and how you arrived here. Just, you know, kind of give us the bullet points of your journey to now. Sure, I'd be happy to. Like all of us, I was born a mystic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll start with that and really including every one of us in that. Um, by that, I mean a bright love being that is here for a purpose in this human life at this time on the planet. And um, unlike many of us, I haven't forgotten that. And so that's really always been the, um, the driving force of my life has been an intimate connection with spirit, the divine source, call it what we will, and a remembrance that I'm here at this moment on this planet for a very specific lifetime um, that would unfold in all of the ways really by nature of following my passions, by following spirit's calling and guidance and intuition, um, having to learn how to become like many of your listeners, perhaps comfortable with being able to see uh, what is usually considered unseen, to become comfortable with being a friend of the dark, <laughs> to be in the unknown and the infinite nature of life, but still walk in the world of people and things. So lots and lots of learning around all of that, as you may experience and can imagine. And then following the thread of what brought me the most life. So as a young child, everything metaphysical and esoteric that I could study um, right into you know my educational years of devouring all I could about world spiritualities and world religions, um, always following that spirit-led inspiration to my love of embodiment, movement, dance, song, expressive arts, all things creative that connect us to the creative force, creator, creatrix energy, um, yoga, Zen, shamanism, uh, back to my roots of Italian uh, pagan and earth-based spirituality. So following those threads, teachers, mentors, uh, degrees, but really it's all been about returning to the source and being a voice for that. Wonderful journey. Let me ask you this, because as you're describing this, I'm wondering myself and for our listeners, I mean, I was born a mystic too, and I vowed never to forget my light being friends, the expanse of and beauty that is our true world. And I know I struggled a bit um, in knowing that from within and not having that reflected back to me in my family and peers. And so I'm wondering how it was for you and, and what were your experiences like as a young, early mystic? Great question, Sarah. Um, let's see, I'll start with that last question first. My experiences were, you know, around the full spectrum of a lot of, of uh, what we might call spirit visitations, especially at night, being very aware of a young, as a young child of feeling unseen beings in my space, of being able to see them, being able to have uh, what we might call now, I didn't know at the time, I just thought this is what's normal, clairvoyance, clairaudience, clairsentience, claircognizance, 
the empathic nature of being able to feel what everyone's feeling, hear their thoughts, even when they're not speaking. Um, you know, the, the communion, and I think the saving grace of it all, because some of that other can make for some crazy making, um, but really feeling in love with spirit, feeling in love with the natural world, feeling supported, guided, held, um, this inner kind of what I describe in this moment is like a giddiness of the whole world is ecstatically alive and I'm here in it. So there was a lot of innate joy and happiness that was always part of my experience. And then as I became enculturated, as we all do and conditioned, there were definitely times that I felt very um, forsaken and uh, depressed. Uh, though my depression was never severe, there were definitely moments where I felt like I have been gypped, you know, like there's this incredible infinite potential for our humanity and a human life and the cultural mainstream uh, narrow minded uh, perspective is very stifling to our infinite nature is very stifling to our unlimited being um, is very limited. And so that was definitely a, a pretty big buzzkill for most of my life. And, and then, yeah, there were times, definitely times of forgetting where just the, uh, you know, the, and, and there's even an understanding I have now in the work that I do of how important it is to support people to remember that we're all whole, that we're all unlimited, that there's so much more than the narrow band of reality that we see on mainstream media or in this very limited idea of what human history actually is. Um, and I'll pause there. Mm -hmm. I, I know, and, and carrying that sense of abundant aliveness and the, the beauty of the multidimensional world. And, you know, until recently, and I, I'm 69, and so I've been carrying this for a long time, that sense of carrying that and just wanting to burst, <laughs> you know, beyond the boundaries of everything here. And like you say, the limitations that seem to squeeze everything down. It's very, it's been a very interesting path to carry that until the time it can be birthed. Um, and as you describe yourself as a, a midwife of the soul, um, it's, it's like each of us who is aware at that level has been carrying this aliveness and protecting it like just like a young young babe in the womb until the time has come for it to emerge and it seems like that time is here now what do you think yes it is <laughs> yes it is and it's been really amazing to look out into the global uh, stage and see that just as there's been so much chaos, so much breakdown, that, that many of us also feel, yes, it's go time. This is what we have been waiting for and cultivating and this momentum our whole life in this lifetime to be at a ready point to serve this paradigm shift and this transition. And uh, as we were connecting before we started recording, we both touched on that awareness that uh, we, I'll use these words, that we need to really steward our frequency because at any moment, the perspective and the energy through which we are viewing the lens of reality um, could look like death, destruction, an old paradigm in ruins, and or it could look like the true birth of a new era of more harmony and beauty and wholeness than has ever been possible, certainly in our lifetimes and certainly for thousands of years on this planet. Ah, I'm just taking that in. Thank you. <laughs> Beautifully spoken. And we are entering a new paradigm. And like you said, it's very confusing to look outside at the chaos and the deconstruction. But to be able to tune in to the waves of energy that are carrying us now 
is something that I know you as an educator um, and myself are trying to help people kind of sense this so that they don't feel so alone or in fear right now, that, that we're looking at a surface crust kind of destruction as the underpinnings of this new age have already been founded, grounded, and structured. Um, so how are you working with people these days to help them tune into this? Great question. I love how the ways that the collective is evolving also shift the quality of needs that, um, that clients come and ask for support with. So on the one-on-one -on -one client uh, realm, I'm finding that many people are coming to me now for how do I activate my human operating system? How do I come into resting with the place of knowing that I'm an unlimited being with unlimited potential? And then how do I learn how to work this? You know, it's almost as though this is such a funny little metaphor that I'm seeing, but if we were told your human operating system is like a little matchbox car, but that actually it's a Tesla, or if that we're, we're shown that um, there's just a little speck of reality that is who we are and what our potential is, but that actually there's an infinite universe. And so as people are waking up, um, they're coming to me to learn how do I move from victim consciousness and, and become a divine creator? How do I um, ride these waves of energy in, in the collective right now to be a paradigm shifter instead of on any level waiting, instead of waiting to start creating. Uh, I'm seeing clearing of old programming, rewiring of new potentials, really working with the brain waves, uh, working with our own deepest hearts, learning how to use our intuition and trust our intuition, learning how to move beyond the five senses into the, the senses of clairaudience and clairvoyance and claircognizance, lighting up to remembering who am I as an infinite soul being and what is my unique contribution right now that if I don't light up to and make, no one else will ever be able to contribute. So these are the pieces individually that, that tend to really be flocking at my door and then collectively and with larger groups mostly with women because i love the the power that um, women have as as leaders of wholeness you know that are really looking out for the whole i see um, women gathering with me in the spirit of rewilding regenerating being deeply connected to the earth, being voices for the earth and the cosmic. Uh, we sing, we dance, we create ceremony with the fire and the water at the center of our circles. And we are uh, rewilding to our alchemical kind of wild yogini earth witch natures. So what I'm hearing you saying, I'm, I'm kind of I'm going to encapsulate this a little bit from how I hear this, but I hear people are coming to you from a perspective of the polarized old paradigm, and they're looking for a way to move into their wholeness, which is the unified beyond polarity paradigm. And that's where we are right now with it, it seems to encapsulate where we are right now, where we're moving from this polarized situation where everything seems to go back and forth, black and white, up and down, into a sense of wholeness. And once you reach that sense of wholeness, the whole world explodes into a, 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 a grandiose, beautiful space, different world. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and to uh, piggyback on what you're saying so beautifully, Sarah, is that in a very simple way, we can view a story of separation as the narrative for humanity or a story of wholeness, um, a story of fragmentation and matter or a story of unified field energy. 
and that in the story of separation that we've been in for such a long time, that all of our education and health and political and uh, kind of overarching systems are based in, it's the story of duality, polarity, where there's separation, there's competition, there's measurement, there's comparison, there's judgment but that's only a limited perspective and it's actually a lie. So, so even just supporting people, because we all know inside our deepest hearts, separation is a lie. No matter what is being reflected back to us, we all come from a place of prior unity, regardless of age or background or nationality or religion. There's a prior unity that birthed us all into being, whatever we call it. And that when we come into this new ancient story paradigm of wholeness, where we're energy in a world of energy, where we wake up to the intelligence of the heart and not just the right and left split of the brain, where we see that we're actually an interbeing and we're all connected and we're all infinite beings rather than limited mental doings there's a whole different way to walk through the world. You make my heart smile, my dear friend. <laughs> Thank you. Let's just take a pause, everyone, and, and take this in because the energy that's coming through from this podcast is really powerful. And if you... Uh, can pause a moment, just breathe and sense yourself, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, sense yourself and the freshness, the newness, the creative energy that you're sharing with us here today. We would love for you to join in with us and create this huge circle of living energy filled with light and support and love. Just take a moment. There's no rules in podcasting where we just have to keep talking. We're allowed to be silent for a moment. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm shown, Sarah? Tell me. Um, that sometimes it is just the simplicity of remembering and having someone, maybe today it's me or you, or maybe another day it's a different reflection that we get in the world, that we are love, right? The sense of this power of, of love, supreme love, unified love, unconditional love. It's not just what we long for. It's not just what we give. It's not what we attempt to get, but it's what we are. It's what we are through and through. You know, it brings up for me, have you ever been um, accused of being too loving? <laughs> <laughs> As if that's a bad thing. <laughs> Yeah, this is, this is something that I extend to anyone who's listening today as well, wherever they might be, either on this, the spectrum of uh, being told that they were too much, too much love, too much joy, too much energy, too much aliveness, too much truth telling, or if that energetic uh, nature of our expanded being has been so dampened that they might actually believe that um, that there's a limit on the love we can be on the energy we can experience and be cynical you know so i've come to have a lot of compassion for those who are skeptics and those who are cynical that believe the narrow-minded bands of reality that is you know, it's ingrained, it's ingrained into us, whether it's by misunderstanding or intentional frequency control. Um, but I am definitely here to say we are not too much and it is time to take the cork off and break the glass ceilings and really remember who we really are and what we're really capable of. And that includes a love being every single one of us 
it's not just some of us. We are love beings. And that when we start to relax into that, you know that and I, I love that even science is catching up with what mystics have always known, that that radiant heart center of the love we are is huge. It can be measured up to six feet in every direction. Yes, we're each a radiant sun. And we, we, sometimes people wonder, what do I do with all this love and exuberance? Uh, how do I ground it? How do I um, source it for myself? How do I create an intimate relationship with all that I am? And, you know, I love your approach, Gabriella. Maybe you can talk a little bit about your journal and how you help people shape this in a way that um, it becomes their space to live in instead of something that they have to prove to the world. Mm, beautiful, beautiful. Well, it will always include being grounded and centered in the body, right? There's this sense of so much is in the air these days around ascension, and that's great. We are ascending. We are ascending as a planet, as well as as a humanity, as well as individuals. But there's also a descent that you spoke to so beautifully as we started, that it's about bringing heaven to earth. It's about the descent of these high frequencies down onto the earth where we live in our bodies on a cellular level. And so this includes any number of infinite practices and ways of being. So the practice becomes the lifestyle, uh, which I believe will always need to include some form of body-centered prayer, meditation, you know, whether it's walking meditation or dance or contemplative prayer in nature, intimate relationship with the natural world, the elementals, the earth, the sky, the sun, the trees, the animal life, there's so much wisdom, intelligence, and, and frequency co-regulation. Oh, I love that, co-regulation. Go ahead. Yes, go right? ahead. <laughs> yeah. Well, that difference of do we co-regulate to the buzz of our refrigerator and our screens, or do we co-regulate to, you know, the, the flutter of the birds and the the potency and the energy of the trees. I mean, trees are amazing teachers, right? So that nature as a primary teacher, I think is an essential uh, way of life for grounding this in our bodies, being, being liberated to remember and then cultivating in any way that feels enlivening for us to remember that we have a direct line to source we have a direct line, our spine, our breath, that we don't need any mediators outside of ourselves to connect us to great spirit, the divine, the infinite, uh, the mystery, call it what you will, that each one of us is honed and capable, and then taking the responsibility of remembering and then being in relation. So much of it, I think, is really about being in relationship to our own creativity whether it's singing, dancing, painting, drawing, poetry, cooking, gardening. I mean, you know, right, that the ways are infinite, but all of the, those essentials of a meditation or prayer practice where we're communing with the more than human world and really honing it so that it's grounded in a body that we are holding as a sacred temple of the divine and then really being connected to all that is through our direct line. There's a few things I want to unpack here that mm -hmm. you said that were wonderful. Um, one is, you know, we, we were addressing the idea that there's so much huge feeling of this mystical beauty and, and incredible love and, and how do you live with that? And you address that by describing the community of the natural world that we are nested with, within, that we're circulating and resonating with a greater world all the time. And that is one way to be able to hold, at least that's the way I learned how to hold 
all this big beautiful energy and then yeah. to recirculate it back into our cells into our minds into our hearts so that we recreate every moment just like nature does um, and then the second point was we're in a new relationship in this era to spirit and to our spiritual beings there are no intermediaries and we're having to go through a redefining of what is holy sacred who is god what ha all those concepts that we've been fed about this god out there and it's a he and it's he's beyond reach and all this um conditioning that that disempowered us it is all breaking up right now and we are capable of having this direct connect because it's not outside of us it's within us and some of the more beautiful ways that you help cr people create um, this new concept I loved reading about on your site and in your journal uh, maybe you can share a little bit of that all the creative ways you use the arts to help people redefine themselves and their concept of the divine sure beautiful uh, i agree it really is a time to redefine ourselves and there may be uh, quite a bit of deprogramming and unlearning mm -hmm. that has to happen before we uh, we kind of rewire into our essential nature as the driver uh, so a lot of the shift of the driver from the mind of separation to the heart of wholeness is what my work and my offerings are all about and certainly the everyday magnificent practices for an unlimited life is all about it's a playbook and it's not my book it's your book i like to say because it's literally a journal that is full of uh, multi-level meditations that are seated meditations nature-based meditations moving meditations, reclining meditations that span the whole spectrum of expressive arts um, and creativity and healing arts, whether it's working with art supplies and circles in making mandalas or playing with the voice and toning or moving and dancing or shifting the idea of meditation into cooking or into uh, creations of how we want to live into our day or our year or our relationship so like really becoming a, a divine creator and that creativity every time that we allow ourselves to tap creativity not for the purpose of product but for the process of our own evolution we are guided by the creator that is moving in us and as us in every moment if we're willing to commune in that way so um, in this way the everyday magnificent journal and also the e-course that's available is really about supporting people to wake up to their unlimited nature and what living a magnificent life is on their own terms as they really live for the soul as they really let the soul be the driver the heart be the driver and not the mind and the process that you take people through in that journal and in your work um, when we when we speak about the creator and creativity it's not about kind of stuffing this large creative force into the old conditioned being you have to be really brave and courageous to open up to the unknown to anything fresh that you haven't thought before that you haven't felt before and allow yourself to crack open to sense this new creative energy um, and and that's a that's a real real journey for people um, for all of us we've we've actually it's a journey that never ends it's a constant cracking open every day um, to the to the new frequencies and and beauty that's coming into the world um, 
and so Gabriella also you know where are you now where are you now with your consciousness and and how you're living in relationship to the expanded multi verse of uh, of energies that we're now experiencing on the planet mm, great points great questions Sarah um, I'd love to share more about where I am. And I also, before I get there, just briefly want to remind um, all of us that there is a magical child within each of us. And that no matter what abuse or trauma or dampening or silencing that child experienced, it is available if we're making the commitment to reconnect to it. And so again, I want to just emphasize relationship, relationship, relationship. If we ask, if we ask our own deepest heart, our own spirit, if we ask that magical child in us, if we ask the many more than human elemental and uh, energy love beings that are everywhere for support, for guidance, they will respond if we ask and if we listen and really reminding us that that magical child nature has so much wisdom. It knows why we're on this planet. It is intimate with our soul being. It knows how to play and be silly and let go and experiment. It doesn't matter if we don't get it right. We don't need to know, right? So the sense of like really relaxing into the unknown, we can't mentally generate this. It comes from really dropping into our deepest heart and remembering our soul nature, our child nature. So just a real simple um, encouragement. We all know how to let go into the unknown. We all can remember how to play and be free and be guided. And um, I'm going to pause there for any comments or. Well, thank you for say. honoring the journey. Um, because we are on a journey from the wounded separation and the wounds of the conditioned world that we have grown up in and that we're in this transitional period. So we, we honor where we're coming from and honor where we're going. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, where are we going? My intention and prayer and vision for all of us is that we're going into the most beautiful, harmonious era we've ever known in our lifetime, in our uh, spectrum of what we have called history. You know, there's so much ancient um, wisdom and mystical wisdom that has been kept from the mainstream. And so there's ways that many of the indigenous First Nations peoples all over the world, many mystics have always known that we are actually uh, part of a cosmological family. So my intention and where I am these days is that I am midwiving and and quantum leaping with people into a remembrance of being part of an intergalactic and interdimensional family of beings, that we are um, regenerating the earth, that we are restoring this beautiful little speck of dust in the infinite multiverse to a garden planet, that we're bringing as much intelligence and consciousness and love frequency onto this planet as possible. As a species, we're at the threshold of making a massive quantum leap in our awareness. And it only takes 10% of a collective before the critical mass must make a shift. So where I am is just right at the front lines of uh, being in love with life and being as present as I can be to every moment and nurturing everything within my realm from my daughter and my plants and my home and my community to then extending to the interbeing of our planetary family and being a force of love and a force of remembrance. And it looks so many different ways, dancing, singing, writing, speaking, being, but I feel like the most important piece that again, I would encourage all of us is to 
come home to our soul wisdom and to know that our being is enough. And your emphasis on the point that we're not alone. We are in community and we need community. And the sense of that's been that's been hidden from us really, you know, and, and used to control us and manipulate us. Uh, the idea that we are just in this 3D world and that's all there is. And you put it so beautifully as your cosmological family and community. When we open up to that, it helps us open up and create communities here on earth because again, we're nested in these greater realities that keep like fractals uh, recreating themselves on different dimensions. And if we can sense our cosmological family and community, we can open up that frequency here on earth so that we find the people that we resonate with and that truly can support and love us for who we are and can rejoice in who we yes. are. Yes, yes, yes. The celebration. Uh, which you, you know, you exude that, Gabriella. You, you just rejoice in everyone and everything around you. You, you have that beautiful rejoicing energy about you. It's wonderful to share time with you. Oh, thank you. Likewise, Sarah. So is there anything uh, you'd like to say in closing uh, to our circle that we've created here? What I feel moved to say is that we need all hands on deck. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. <laughs> it's so simple, but that let lit up people, light up the world. Beautiful. And, and you have a free offering for our listeners. I, I, do. Yeah. I do. I believe that the free offering today is a unity coherence meditation. And uh, though we didn't speak much in detail about it, heart-brain coherence is a frequency. It's a, it's a state of being where we are in a um, deeply relaxed present state where we can tap into that place of deep silence and peace and centeredness, where our, literally our heart rhythms and our brain rhythms come into a sacred marriage, if you will, of harmony and ease and flow. And that as we cultivate that within, we also start to broadcast that as we walk through the world. And, and this, um, this offering helps us to be a lighthouse, you know, to be in coherence and lit up from the inside and stay centered while we're broadcasting bright to the world. Fantastic. And guess what? We're not going to end. Don't hang up, everyone. <laughs> Because another question's coming through, and I can feel this coming in from the listeners. So we talked about our cosmological family, okay? And I find that uh, people are always asking, how do I know that what I'm sensing or envisioning, that these are, are real beings, that this is truly something I'm not just dreaming up with my imagination, and that what I see or feel in the unseen world is really true. Can we address that for people? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, the, I'd say the first and most important response to that is that the proof is in the pudding, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> that we each have to do our work. How do you know? that you love your dog? How do you know that your mother loves you? Like, how do you know? Because you have intimate relationship. And so as we release the bonds, the bondage of our limited perception, and we're willing to take responsibility for knowing and for seeing and for feeling, at the level of what's available, which is profound. And we stop blaming and shaming, including ourselves, and we stop being a victim 
all of a sudden there's so much available energy that comes for us to focus on deepening relationship to love, deepening relationship to the infinite nature of life. And so we ask and we listen and we receive and just like we cultivate relationship with our closest humans, we cultivate relationships with the spirit world and we listen and feel for frequency. Uh, the universal language is frequency. And so if we receive after having done the work of clearing our heart lens and uh, dropping all of the, the judgment and stigma and self-doubt that we may have to do some work to deprogram from, then we can start to trust our intuitive, bodily felt knowing around what frequencies are expansive, are loving, are uh, life-giving, and which are not. And then just as we walk through the world and know what is toxic and what is nectar, we start to build trust with move towards the bliss, move towards the energy that is life-giving and that is nectar for your soul and for your being. Mm -hmm. That's how I would answer it. How about you, Sarah? Well, uh, I would answer it exactly the same way you did, <laughs> really. Um, I bring it down to, has there been a substantial shift in my being as a result of a relationship uh, on earth or in heaven or in the cosmos? And have I opened up? Has my body felt more healed? Do I feel more aligned? Do I feel happier? That's that's what I I bring uh, to my assessment of this, and it's like in a dream. You know, you don't really know all the different levels that you dream on, and you still get messages, you still get healings, you still get warnings. And so we're mm -hmm. certainly um, in communication with worlds and worlds of beings and knowledge. And at some point we become all that, we embrace all that. And at other points we're in relationship to it. So it's this, beautiful sense of everything being alive and intelligent and life sourcing from wherever the point of that life is. The other point I want to make is it's never just one way. It's always two ways. We always think of or imagine that the, you know, the beings that we have contact with in other dimensions that they're giving us something or or something's coming from them to us, but there's something from us going to them as well. It's not a two, it's not a one way relationship. And we tend to take ourselves out of that equation. And once we enter into the equation, it truly becomes a relationship. Well said, absolutely. Mm -hmm. It is a communion and it, it is. is an exchange. Wonderful. So, and I hope that answered the question of the person who's going to be listening to this in the future <laughs> because it was coming up. So Gabrielle and I are going to say goodbye now and wish you well and please uh, check out her uh, meditation that she's offering to you and go to her website and look at her offerings and the beautiful blogs and and all the information. She's got a wealth of information on her website. Would you like to give the website name right now, Gabriella? Sure. It's www.gabriella, spelled with one L, masala, M-A-S-A-L-A dot com. And I love um, hearing from you and look forward to connecting in any way that feels great. Great. All the information will be in the podcast notes and we send our blessings out to everyone. Have a great week. Thank you so much. So much love. Thanks for listening to the Earth Love Spirit Podcast. If you like what you heard, 
The best compliment you can give us is to share this podcast with a friend. And be sure to give us some stars and a favorable review at Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen in.